This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and what a privilege it is that I can come right to where you are. Thank you for turning on your device. And stay with me today all the way to the end of the program, because today we're going to see that even though it feels like a hurricane is rolling across the land, evil and darkness, they blow in and they blow out, and those who endure to the end always win. And we're going to see in Scripture today that we are, are the God-appointed winners. Say amen. But hey, I'm teaching you for my new series, which is called Last Days Survival Guide. It is 15 parts. It comes in all kinds of formats with a wonderful study guide. Please order this today. Just go online or give us a call to order yours right now. And we're also offering you today my book by the same title called Last Days Survival Guide. The foreword is written by my friend Perry Stone. And the subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. And notice that on the cover, there's a Bible with boots. That's because we got to put on our stomping boots and grab our Bible. My friend, we're living in the last days. We really are. We are. And we need to grab our Bible, grab our boots, and decide that we're going to tromp through this period with the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority of Jesus' name. And I wrote this book to help you know how to deal with all the issues that we're confronting as a last day's generation. It might be the most practical book that I've ever written. And one thing I really like about it is at the end of every chapter, there are action steps for you to take in response to what you have read. But you can also order this by going online or by giving us a call. And please remember that we want to pray for you. We're praying people. We believe in the power of prayer and we see miraculous results to our prayers all the time. Now, you can pray by yourself. Of course you can. But Jesus said where two or three of you are in agreement together, he's going to move. And sometimes it just helps to have somebody else pray with you. And if you'll reach out to us by calling or going online, we will release our faith with you. But today, before we return to the teaching, I want to share a few testimonies about people who called us for prayer. One woman called to say she received my journal called My Peace-Filled Day. She said the enemy had been attacking her with distractions, depression, discouragement, and sadness. But when she received the book, as she read it, she heard the Holy Spirit telling her to give her emotions to the Lord and to believe that He would help her. And as she obeyed, every negative emotion lifted from her and she was flooded with the peace and joy of God. She is excited about the devotional journey and what the Holy Spirit has done for her through it. Another person called to say, our daughter had been hospitalized and has lived with us unable to live alone. But we called in for prayer and soon she was discharged from the hospital where she had been and began living on her own. The Lord provided for her the most wonderful living situation. Plus, she returned to the job she had before this nightmare began. She loves it, and she's excelling in her work. All praise to Jesus. To look at our daughter, you would never guess that this vibrant young woman spent most of the last two years under medical care. Thank you for your prayers. Our God is really faithful. Another woman also called to say, how thankful she was for my teaching on faith. She previously called for prayer on behalf of a friend who had cancer, and she wanted us to know that now her friend has no trace of cancer in her body. My friends, God moves when you pray in faith, and we want to pray in faith with you. So reach out to us, either call us now or go online to let us know how to pray for you. But reach for your Bible. Today we're going to return to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And today we're going to begin our teaching in verse 4. But I want to review very quickly verses 1 through 3. In the King James Version, 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And the RIV says it like this. You emphatically and categorically need to know with unquestionable certainty that in the very end of days, when time has sailed to its last port and no more time remains for the journey, that last season will stand in the midst of uncontrollable, unpredictable, hurtful, treacherous, menacing times and will be emotionally difficult for people to bear. Wow, that is amazing. But then we come to verse 2, which the King James Version says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. But the RIV of this verse says, Men will be self-focused, self-centered, self-absorbed, self-consumed, and in love with themselves more than anyone else. As a result of this self-love, they'll be driven to obtain more and more and more. These boasters are so committed to their own agenda that they're willing to exaggerate, overstate the facts, stretch the truth, embellish a story, and even lie if it will get them the position, advantage, or goal they desire. They are arrogant, haughty, impudent, snooty, and insolent. They disdain, mock, slander, and speak ill of anyone who stands in the way of their ideology, and they freely use foul language. And in this climate, parents will no longer be able to persuade, control, lead, or exercise authority over their own children. And although people were once thankful and appreciative, people will generally become void of gratitude and will be unappreciative of everything. Impurity will seep into society and cause it to become impure, ill-mannered, unclean, indecent, coarse, vulgar, offensive, crude, lewd, and rude. That is a very good interpretation of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. But then we go to the King James version of verse 3, which says, Men will be without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. But the RIV of this verse says it like this. Love for and commitment to family will disintegrate. Divorce will become epidemic with irreconcilable differences being a major factor in tearing families apart. Every imaginable type of covenant will be regularly violated and the court system will be overwhelmed as people go overboard suing and being sued. People will generally lose the ability to say no and will be unable to control their instincts in nearly every area of life. People will become savage and it will eventually feel like there are no laws to protect the innocent. Ay, ay, ay. My friends, that sounds like the day that we're living in right now. And it is because we're living at the end of the age. And the Bible says, if you see all these things and if you feel like you're surrounded by them on every side, welcome to the end of the age. Tag, you're it. You've been called to live in the end of the age. But God does not give us these things to scare us, but to prepare us. He wants us to know what's coming so we'll get ready for it and will be strong enough to resist all of these temptations. But today we're going to continue in verse 4. And in the King James Version, verse 4 says, People will be traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now there's a lot in that verse, and I cannot unpack that entire verse in a single program, but we're going to begin with the first three words, which say traitors, heady, and high-minded. And if it's all right with you, we're going to return to the whiteboard. And by the way, thank you for letting me know that you've been enjoying the whiteboard. Let's go. Well, at the whiteboard, we look at chapter 3, verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, which in Greek looks like this. The word traitors is the word prodotai. The word heady is the word propates. And high-minded is the word tetuphomenoi. And these words are really, really important. The word prodotai really means unfaithful friends or fair weather friends. Now I'm going to go through these with you one by one. The second word propetes describes people that are given to recklessness and to violence. And the word tetuphomenoi is from the Greek word to fuo, which is where we get the word for a typhoon. Now that is amazing because it tells us at the end of the age, we're going to look up 
it's going to feel like spiritually and morally and ethically the skies are turning dark. It's like a typhoon is rolling in from the sea. And it's a signal that we need to batten the hatches and get ready because this thing is really coming. But the good news is, just like storms blow in, they also blow out. This is not forever. But I want us to look at all three of these words one by one. And let's begin with the first word, which in the King James Version is translated as the word traitors, which I would really translate as fair weather friends. It is a word which describes one who is a traitor to an oath, one who betrays or abandons a friend, a lack of commitment to oaths or to relationships, or one who is treacherous in the context of an oath or a relationship, or again, a fair-weathered friend. And here we find, by the Holy Spirit using this word traitors, a very specific Greek word, he's warning us that in the very end of the last days, there will be a lack of commitment to relationships. In fact, it will proliferate in society in mass, and friendships will not be what they once were. These traitors are likely people who seem to be friends as long as things are good. But the moment the relationship hits a bump or a problem is encountered along the way, they break their oath of friendship. In this sense, they are faithful, they're unfaithful to keep an oath. In fact, they're faithful to keep an oath only as long as they don't have any inconveniences or if the relationship doesn't cost them more than they planned when they first made their commitment. Thus, the oath was on shaky soil even when it was first made. And it shows the lack of commitment to relationships that will come to exist in mass in the last of the last days. And this Greek word really demonstrates the lack of commitment and the shallowness of relationships that will develop between individuals at the end of the age. Maybe you have discovered that people you thought would really be friends to the end were not faithful. Well, this word describes that. Just make sure that you don't become one of them. You don't become one of them that's called a traitor. Instead, you need to dig in your heels and be faithful to your friends. Because at the end of the age, a lot of people are going to be unfaithful. They're just going to be fair weather friends. If you've personally been disappointed or hurt by shallow relationships, it's time for you to ask the Holy Spirit to heal your heart. And my friends, he is a healer and he is on standby right now to heal your heart and get you in shape so you can begin to develop some really strong relationships that will last to the end of your life or to the end of this age or until the rapture of the church. Say amen. But if you feel that you've been disappointed by relationships, we'll just say welcome to the end of the age because it's one of the signs that we've sailed to the last port and not much more time remains for the journey. But then the verse goes on and says people will become heady. The word heady is the word propates. You say, well, what in the world does the word heady really mean? This is a word that depicts people that are wholly given to violence who enjoy violence and who become known for their violent, reckless, rash, emotional intemperance. And the Holy Spirit here really is prophesying of a time to come right now when people will be given to violence and be unable to control their tempers. We've already seen in a previous program that today the hottest selling tickets in the cinema are movies filled with violence and brutality. People have developed a thirst for blood and violence in entertainment. And my friend, if Jesus tarries and future historians look back on our time, I want to ask you, what will they say about us? You know, I told you that I took my sons, Denise and I took them to Rome once to see the Colosseum. And we said to them, this is the place where gladiators fought gladiators and animals ate human beings. And the people cheered and shouted and stomped with glee when they saw the splattering of blood. It seems so brutal to us. But what will people say when they look at us? And when they look at the kind of movies that we watched and the music that we listened to and the things which we found to be enjoyable entertainment, what will they say about us? My friends, we need to be very careful what we're seeing and what we're listening to. And remember, 
that our souls are very, very precious. And in light of these things, I need to ask you a question. Since we're living at the end of the age and we don't want to fall victim to all these things, and remember, violence desensitizes your soul and your spirit. So I need to ask you, if you took an honest look at your media cabinet or all the files in your computer, in your digital devices of movies, television programs, songs, and all those things, how many of you, how many of you, think Jesus would be willing to watch or listen to those things with you? Would he sit down and say, that's a good movie? If the answer is no, then maybe it's time for you to go through your files and do some house cleaning and get rid of that stuff, which grieves the Holy Spirit. If it grieves the Holy Spirit, it grieves you too. And my friends, you need to do some house cleaning. And remember that Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life, which means it is imperative that we be careful what goes into our mind and what goes into our heart. We need to be careful about what goes into our eyes and what goes into our ears. But then the verse goes on to say in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, people will become high-minded. And the word high-minded is plural. In fact, all of these are plural. Prodotai is plural. Propetes is plural. Tetu fomenoi, it is plural, which means the Holy Spirit is not talking about isolated incidences. Somebody might say, ah, Brother Rick, you're just exaggerating. No, I'm just quoting scripture. I'm just quoting scripture directly from the Greek text. It's plural in every case. And this is from the word tifo, which describes a typhoon. But in Greek, here is how it usually is used. It is a word which describes one who is inflated with pride or one who is puffed up and clouded by his own sense of self-importance. And it is from this Greek word where we get the word typhoon. And that is very, very important. And I want to read to you directly from my notes because I want to make sure I say this right. Listen careful. Think about what happens when people are informed that a typhoon or a hurricane is coming. They begin preparing for its arrival by picking up and putting away things that could be damaged or destroyed. Windows are boarded up, vehicles are moved to higher ground, and loved ones are taken out of harm's way. And the closer the storm gets, the darker the skies become, and more violent winds begin to rage, and everything looks ominous and foreboding. All of that is in this word, high-minded. Is that amazing? And by using this particular Greek word, the Holy Spirit is telling you and me that in the end of days, there will be moments when it will look like society is rapidly degenerating right before our eyes into one huge mass of people who arrogantly deny God and are self-inflated with pride. It will almost seem like a typhoon or a hurricane with massive, dark, destructive clouds and winds and heavy rains are moving in and over the landscape. But here's the good news. When such a violent storm arrives, everything is affected except for, except for those who've taken appropriate shelter who have fled from the storm. And the good news is typhoons and hurricanes blow in and blow out. They never last very long. They're short-lived. They eventually pass. Just as they blow in, they blow out. And the reason we have 2 Timothy chapter 3 is because the Holy Spirit is warning us that this is coming. He's warning us. Think of what love it is that he would warn us. He is telling us to batten the hatches. He is telling us to take shelter, to make sure we protect those that we love, to move to higher ground. Maybe you need to move to spiritually higher ground. You need to do everything you can to stay out of harm's way and... Don't just protect yourself, but think about who else you can help. Think about who else you can help. We're living in a world where people have been devastated. And according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, treacherous, perilous times that are emotionally difficult to bear. My friends, people are dealing with so many things today and so many different kinds of fear and we have the answers to help them. So rather than just batten the hatches and take care of ourselves, we need to grab a few people with us, pull them out of harm's way, and if they've already been hurt, then we need to do whatever we can to help them get healed and get back on their feet again. This is a great opportunity living in the end of the age. 
Now, my friends, I think all of that is amazing. Now, here is the RIV of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 to this point. Listen to this. People will find it easy to walk away from commitments and to easily throw away relationships. They will become reckless, impulsive, and known for their enjoyment of violence. It may end up feeling like society is being overwhelmed with destructive winds, but those menacing winds of change will eventually blow out like a storm that comes and goes. That's the promise of Scripture. My friends, we can do this. Jesus said, tag, you're it. I've called you to live at the end of the age. You're not here by an accident. You're called, you're appointed, you're anointed, and you can do this. And you can help as many people as possible along the way. So let's do that. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment. But first, I have something else I'd like to share with you. Someone asked the question, how much should I pray in tongues? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18 to see what the Apostle Paul said about praying in tongues. And in this verse, he said, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. And he was speaking to the Corinthians who were known for speaking in tongues. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. But why did Paul speak so much in other tongues? And the answer is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, where Paul writes, He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. And that word edify is an architectural term, which means to knock out the walls, make the room bigger, increase your capacity. And Paul is literally saying that when you pray in tongues, it increases your spiritual capacity to receive more and more and more. And my friends, as long as you're praying in tongues, you're going to be increasing your spiritual capacity. So it's not ever possible to pray in tongues too much. What are the signs that we are living in the last days? How do we survive the crazy times we are living in right now? In this 15-part series, Rick Renner dives into the Greek New Testament to show you how to navigate these stormy end-time waters. Join Rick at the whiteboard as he visually opens key secrets to clearly show what the Bible says about the crazy times we are living in. Rick will teach you what the word perilous means, how society is prophesied to go berserk on many levels at the end of the age, how the legal, educational, and entertainment systems will become armed against the righteous, how to navigate this end-time storm. This is a series you'll want to share with others, and it is available in digital or physical format starting at just $24. In addition to this 15-part teaching series, you can also order Rick's book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. This book will show you how to protect your family, your children, and your grandchildren from the evil being spread through media, education, Hollywood, and the courts. With the help provided in Last Day Survival Guide, you will learn how to walk in victory regardless of what is going on in the world around you. Today, we're offering this incredible book to you for just $27. Don't miss this powerful offer. Order the bundle of the series, Last Day Survival Guide, and the companion book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm so excited that today I can come to you from our Tulsa, Oklahoma headquarters building, and I'm standing in the production department where we produce so many resources for people who live all over the ends of the earth that reach out to us for teaching that they can trust. And I know that's the call of God on our life. Proverbs 10:21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and our job is to feed many the wonderful Word of God. And right now, we're wanting to retire the debt on this building so it frees up funds so we can take the Bible to further places across the world. If you're part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team so we can take the transforming truths of God's Word to people all around the world and together we'll retire the debt on this building and it will free up finances so we can reach those that are crying out for answers from God's Word.
Well, we've come to the end of the program, and today we've covered a lot of material, and it's the end of the week. And today is the last day of this week, which we're offering you my series, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide, 15 parts. It comes in multiple formats with a study guide. I don't know about you, but I think all these things we're covering from the Greek text are really, really enlightening. And it's all in the study guide. I want you to have the study guide so that you can read it while you're seeing or hearing the whole series. Put it in your eyes, put it in your ears, really get it down deep inside your heart. And we're offering you my book by the same title, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. And the subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. And my friends, these really are perilous times. And God has told us everything we need to know to protect ourselves so that we do not come, become victims of what's going on in the world around us. We do not have to be victimized if we'll wake up to what the Bible says and batten the hatches. And my friends, eventually this storm is going to blow through and we will be the survivors. But the back of this book says, God wants you prepared for these perilous times. You can also order this by going online or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us by calling or by going online, please let us know how to pray for you. We're waiting right now for the phone to ring or your email to show up in the inbox so we can begin to pray and we really will pray for you. But put your hand on your heart and I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for the privilege that we could be together today. And I thank you, Father, that even though it seems like a storm has blown in, it's going to blow out and you've given us all the spiritual goods we need to survive and even thrive and help us, Lord, to help others along the way. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you in the next program. But hey, remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. Sunday, January 21st, we're going to be with Pastor Mark and Tasha Bentliff at New Creation Church in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. On Sunday, January 28th, we'll be with Pastors Mark and Rhonda Garver at the Cornerstone Word of Life Church in Madison, Alabama. On Saturday and Sunday, February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be with Pastors Jim and Ann Freeze at the Joy Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.